Hello everybody and welcome to this update video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to this show where I talk about some of the stuff that I've got up to this week and um, some of the improvements that Inkscape is ma making. Um, but first, before I dive into the actual work, let me give a big shout out and a big th thank you to everybody who sponsors me to spend time on Inkscape. Um, thank you all so much. Um, it's really only because of the user support that I really have the ability to spend what is essentially my work time on Inkscape professionally. Um, so thank, thank you all so much. And I, and I hope that you're getting the, um, the improvements in Inkscape that you want to see. Um, speaking of, let's talk about some of the stuff that we managed to get up to this week. Um, so we're moving into sort of like bug fixing territory. And one of the things that I try and do is improve how Inkscape um, operates for people who are testing the bug fixes and uh, testing the, the, the releases in gen general. So it's just so because there's a lot of things in Inkscape that are not well tested by, by code and they need human beings to test them. So how can we make that better? One of the things is to improve the emergency save functionality. So you're probably aware that when Inkscape crashes, it creates an emergency save. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to improve all of that user experience that, that you have around the emergency save. And essentially what it what I've managed to make it do is it puts the emergency save file into the recent files men menu. And it also encodes what the original file name was. Uh, what this allows us to do is essentially on the start menu, uh, when you go to open um, you know, a file, you can actually see uh, emergency saves. Right, so you, you go in there, you see the file name, the original file, file name, and then on the right hand side in gray, there's a little tag that says this is an emergency save. When you open that, it opens the emergency save file name, which usually contains a whole bunch of digits, but it sets the original file, file name as the file name and marks it as unsaved. Um, this basically means that opening this emergency save looks like you've opened the original file in an unsaved way. Uh, allowing you to just quickly control S and save your work back to the original file file name if that's what you need to, to do. Um, the way the, the this I think will improve the user experience for people that have crash, crashes, right? It's not so, something that should should happen, but we know that crashes do happen. Um, so making the user experience for recovery better is definitely going to help. Um, I also marked these recent files as private, which means that hopefully they shouldn't pollute other pro programs. So you shouldn't see a whole bunch of Inkscape SVGs as images in other pro programs with all of the little date, you know, uh, file, file name extras. Um, I also sorted the list in the start men menu because it really should be uh, sorted by modification dates. So that's now fixed. Another thing that I, I wanted to fix for Inkscape um, to help with debugging is allowing a user to run more than one Inkscape version at the same time. Um, what happens currently is that if you try to load Inkscape 1.1 and then you try to load Inkscape 1.2 at the same time, Inkscape 1.2 will just open a new window in the existing 1.1, which uh, it's kind of it's kind of sucks, especially if you're testing because a tester might be testing hundreds of different versions. So I managed to figure out a way of telling the um, application fr framework that we use that uh, you know if we if we are the first Inkscape, then we claim the the generic name, and if we are the second Inkscape, then we have a unique name that allows us to just run as a separate thing. What it does is it checks the version. So if you're running the same version then it'll work as it always has. It'll open a window in the existing process. It'll save memory and resources by not loading an entire new Inkscape when you have two SVGs. Um, but if you have two different versions of Inkscape, then it should allow you to um, have them open side by side. Um, and obviously you should use the file about dialog to know for sure which one you're running in each win window. Also, I fixed an issue with the extensions. Uh, essentially, if you had extensions with the same ID installed in your private configuration, um, it would cause some like weird Python error. Th this has been going on for a while, but it's so rare to have the same ID, um, but that's fixed. Um, I also fixed an issue with the 
forum, uh, we had a moderator tooling pro problem where it was possible to approve posts by spammers who had already been banned and moderators could be fooled into approving their later posts. Um, yeah, just uh, just tweaks to like how, how that works and how we um, take down some posts when they are been banned. Um, okay, so that's what I've been get, got up to. Let's have a look at some of the other things that have been happening in the Inkscape pro project. Uh, there's been a lot going on. So first I, I wanted to highlight Mykov. Um, he's a UX user facing developer mostly. And so he's actually merged two of his big pro projects. One is a symbols dialogue refactoring, which I'm hopefully gonna show you on the screen. I usually don't do that for this sec sec section, but I think these, these are pretty cool. And the other is a document resources dialogue that shows you basically all of the uh, CSS uh, symbols and various other resource sources that you have in the document so you can overview what's going on. Um, Habir has allowed uh, resizing of windows through through actions, um, which are basically allows command line and DBoss to control in Inkscape win windows and sizes. And he's added a, a customizable shared profile direct directory which essentially means this is that if you're in a business using Inkscape and you want a shared directory with the same extensions and stuff, you can do that now. Um, Vanish Apal fixed the uh, paste style on locked layers. This should prevent you from accidentally pasting style on a locked layer. Uh, Christian uh, Rowifs, hope I'm pronouncing that right, fixed the uh, clip mask grouping mode preference. Um, Mark, fixed the builds for Windows and Linux. He's basically gearing up for the uh, alpha release. And uh, KRLR17 fixed the rubber band selection for the uh, when, you, when, you, when you're really zoomed in. Um, a really interesting tweak. And they've been stepping up recently doing more, more of the te testing stuff too, um, which is great, great to see because it's very, 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 very helpful. Okay. So that's it for this week. Um, I want to thank, thank you for joining me for this update. Um, I'll, I'll catch you all next week. I'm not entirely 100% sure what I'll be doing. So if you have suggestions of bugs, not features, that you think need to be prioritized, please let me know in the comments or on the Patreon. And, uh, and consider jo joining my paid, Patreon as well. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Okay, that wasn't uh, stable.